good. I, yeah. Well, for a lot of years, I thought that I there was something wrong with my work. As in, sure. it wasn't, um, not that it wasn't good enough, but it wasn't real art. That, that art shouldn't even be anywhere near what I was doing. And I think um, the local artist guild helped me put that into perspective, that what I do is art, even if some people don't appreciate it. Welcome to the uh, Local Artist Guild podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm going to throw out there that this is being produced by Eric Liu and Nicholas Zapp, uh, just to make them a little uncomfortable uh, for good fun. Uh, this is hosted by uh, Mouse Cafe, which is me. And uh, today we've got um, my good friend Jennifer Griffin um, from Jennifer Griffin Studios and Thistle and Sky and uh, Griffin House. Mm -hmm. So we've got several things to talk about and cover, and she is a published photographer, uh, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself. So tell us about some of the publications you've been in, who you are. Um, well, as you said, I'm Jennifer Griffin, and uh, I've been published in a few uh, imprint magazines, Bridal Guide magazine, uh, Jewelry Affair magazine, uh, Handmade Business magazine. Nice. Locally, uh, I was in uh, Enjoy Cherokee magazine oh yeah i remember seeing yeah, that twice for sure. uh, i did the cover for two and then they interviewed me for one um so yeah oh and a fashion college in in um canada also had my work as well i'm originally from southern california uh i moved with my family uh in the early 90s to woodstock um for work <laughs> sure <laughs> my yeah. uh Stepdad worked for Lockheed and we got transferred out here. So we landed in Woodstock and been here ever since. Cool. You deal in a lot of different things. We've got some of your work set up here and we're yes. going to do what we can to cover all of it a little bit instead of a little bit a lot, but I'm sure we'll get <laughs> off talking about a few things. So can you tell us about the variety of mediums that you like to like to deal in and maybe how they... Uh, I've got written down to talk about each of your different business names and, and the focuses of each of those, but tell us about the spectrum of mediums that you work in. Well, I pretty much work in whatever. <laughs> that, okay, I <laughs> Everything agree. Everything and all things. <laughs> um, I, I get bored easily with one particular thing, and so I'll move to something else. Um, it, it's been like that since childhood. Um, there's... But there is a method to my madness sure. in that, um, you know, art isn't free. It costs. Not only does it cost a part of your soul, it also costs money. Right. right. <laughs> so what I what I did was uh, create um, items or functional art pieces to fund my not so functional things. Sure. So that that's part of the reason why there's uh, so much that I work in is that um, Griffin House sales help fund my photography uh, escapades. Sure. <laughs> um, just because fabric is not cheap, and it you know it, it costs to to create this stuff, so the funds have to come from somewhere, and um, we it just can't come from our personal budget. Sure, supplies, material, right. time, all of <laughs> right. those things are an expense that uh, right. It's really easy to overlook in, in, in a lot of this. And so you use uh, you use certain things that you do to help facilitate and fund right. other things that you do. So let me before we move on from that, let me ask you: if there, Is there any medium that you stay away from? That might be an easier question for you because I know how many different things you do work in. Um, not necessarily. Um, there are particular techniques I don't use. Like I, I will never quilt. I will never quilt in my entire life. Sure, okay. It's just not my thing. I think it's beautiful, but it is um, entirely way too precise. Sure. Um, also, uh, things like um, needle crafts. So um, cross stitch or knitting or crocheting or any of those things. I, I It's actually when I was younger, I used to knit, um, okay. but younger as in like 12. Sure. Um, but it's definitely, it, it just doesn't, it, it's not something that really um, 
fuels my fire. It doesn't I guess. really call to you. It doesn't. Or... And, it, and it also doesn't really allow me to express what it is that I express through my photography. Sure. So that's, that's my favorite. My photography is my, my go-to and where my heart is, where my passion is, where I, where I pour most of my soul into. Sure. So let's talk about that for a, a few minutes. So your photography, you know, is the top of your list. Yes. So tell us about what you're, what you're doing. Uh, you know, I, I've looked, I've seen a lot of your photographs. I've seen a lot of your work. Um, and it took me a little while to understand what you were trying to do. Uh, but I've since after, you know, a lot of time spent together in conversations, um, I've learned that you do have a specific purpose. So tell us a little bit about what you're looking to do when you create this image and all of the components in the image and the costume and the makeup and in this photo, you even created the person. So <laughs> yes. there's a there's a huge depth that I think um, can be missed on folks when they just take in a photograph, uh, you know, and, in the internet, you get about one second to get approval or a like or something like that. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you're looking to attain when you when you piece these projects together that have so much depth. Mostly, I'm trying to tell a story that's going on in my head. Sure. Um, that story may not necessarily be a literary piece. It may just be... Um, a thought process or an emotional state or a season of life that I may be in. And it the photography is a means to express that. Um, I, I don't actually consider myself a photographer. It just happens that a camera is what I use to paint my picture. Sure. Um, because I am motivated by life. Um, inspired by my children, inspired by nature, inspired by other people, other people's sure. work, other artists. Um, and it, it encourages me to produce images that help invoke um, feelings and emotions in other people, help them to feel something, help them to experience. So my photography isn't just, oh, isn't that pretty? My goal is to... Um, force people to experience sure. something. Try to take them somewhere else. Yes. Through their own mind. Transport them sure. to, to somewhere they've never been, somewhere maybe they had visited and need to get back to. Uh, a lot of I, I've feedback I've heard from other people. Uh, they've one thing that they've mentioned is that it makes them feel. They they feel something. I like that, yeah. And in a in a world that is uh sometimes numb. I think it's good. I think it's sure. good for people to feel, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's a something that they've not felt in a long time or haven't felt before. Sure. Yeah. That emotions are so important and in, in all of our expressions and operations in daily lives. And, uh, you know, if you can connect with someone through emotion, you know, in a, through a photograph or through a, a work of art, I mean, that's what this is about. in, in so many ways, it's the feelings. I mean, it really is. And I think that's um, one of the riddles to life is that um, we're all chasing different kind of feelings. So that's a, that's a great, great synopsis. But you're, you're building a story. You, you have, do you have a final image in mind when you start out on one of these journeys? Or are you sort of developing that as you, um, you, is it coming into focus as you build it? Or is it something that you're building from a finite image in your head that's already, you, you can already that's see a, it. You're just trying to work towards that's it. That's a really good question. Uh, it's both. Okay. Some cases it's one, some cases it's the other. Some cases it's just, I am needing to get something out. I'm needing to, to express whatever this is. And it just kind of happens. Sure. And other times there's a plan. Other times there's a vision. Other times I might hear a piece of music and I, I see it in my head. Right. And so I want to express that. Um, and in some cases, I just want to doodle and I don't doodle on paper. I doodle with stuff. Sure. So, <laughs> so, yeah, that process is so important. And I know that's a lot of what does it for me is it's not necessarily the end, Im end image or the beginning of the process, it's all the space in between that's sort of 
helps me get to where I'm going. And, and so I, I love it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. fantastic. Like those two images right there, uh -huh. the, that's how those happened. Those were doodles and both of those were created, both the costumes and the makeup and everything uh, happened over uh, lockdown. Um, sure. Those are my two older daughters. Um, and so it was easy to photograph them because, you know, we were quarantined together. Right, right. Um, and all of us were just struggling so much just with, with everything and various things. And so I said, let's do photo shoot in the backyard. Sure. So they were in, taken in the back backyard. Um, this one was very well thought out. This, right. this one had a plan. This one had a story. Um, it, there's a series that belongs to this particular sure, image. Sure. Um, so yeah, it, it's, so, so I like, you know, you're talking about uh, tough times and, and, and people are, you know, everybody's navigating this past uh, year and a half or so. And, and it, it was, it was, well, let's just do the thing that we know how, that we know to do. We start to put the pieces together, build this story, work together as a unit and, and produce something that everybody feels good about. Now, frankly, I remember getting one of these photos <laughs> sent to me for review very early on. Yeah, it's probably and probably I, that one. I just it just blew me away. I'll call so, Gatekeeper. <laughs> if um I believe well, we've got some pieces that are similar to that here. So let's take a second and talk about the three different um business names that you operate mm -hmm. under. And as you go through those, let's sort of point and tell people okay. what business they're looking at when they look at this part yeah. of your work. Okay. So, so we'll build up to this costume in the middle here. Okay. So you can't start with that one. You have to okay. start. Well, I'll start with Griffin House. Sure. Uh, Griffin House started, you know, my last name is Griffin, obviously. And um, I had made a gift for someone, some wine glass charms out of some, okay, yeah. some uh, vintage earrings. And they were really cool. And they were like, oh, you should totally sell these. And it's it's a product that is uh, earth friendly. You know, it's recycled. Sure, upcycles and yes. reclaimed type and items. So it just kind of grew into what it is today. Um, that particular business and their products, uh, wine glasses, wine charms, uh, wine stoppers, uh, these things here, okay, glassware, decanters, decanters, glassware. Sure. It has a wide audience. So someone may not buy a whole costume, but they might buy some wine glasses sure. and support me and my work through this other venue. Um, and it's functional and you can use it. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that's how that started cool. was just simply something that would help me, that people would like, people would enjoy, that's unique and different, that would help me with my art. Sure. And it's all like... you touched on functional i'm a big fan of functional art right. i know i have at least a couple of pieces of your functional work yep uh and so let's go on to the next so that's griffin house yes. is that right okay yes. and i think the other two thistle and sky would be next so thistle and sky uh i initially started out um making jewelry okay years and years ago um just to kind of help with uh personal funds sure I'm um, a stay-at-home mom, and I was at home, and so this is something I could do to help pay bills. Right. Um, I used to carry that in Jennifer Griffin Studios, and I found that my jewelry style doesn't fit my photography art style. Okay. And so it was actually recommended by uh, a business associate mm -hmm. um, to separate the two out. Um, just because the markets are different. The people that would buy my jewelry are not the people that would necessarily buy my art. Sure. And so it wasn't being found because the, my target market for Jennifer Griffin Studios is different than my target market for um, Thistle and Sky. Sure. So it's that business part of, of the industry that is um, you either take classes to learn or you learn as you go. Sure. And, as yeah. I've been doing this for over 10 years now, I, I learned some things along along the way about, you know, just the business aspect of things. Yeah, experience goes so far right. and, and you realize that if you're, you've got your your things in this bucket, but people are looking in this other place for it, you, right. you've got to figure out how to make those connections. Correct. Uh, without um, 
you know, losing value or efficiency or anything like that. So uh, rebranding and, and branch branding yes. is, has become a real important thing for makers, I think, and creatives in general. Definitely. If you're, if you're going after the wrong market, you're never going to hit. So right. yeah, that's, that's really interesting. So that gets us to, um, Jennifer Griffin, Studios. Jennifer Griffin studios. That's right. So tell us a little bit about what you've got going on here. Um, you brought some awesome costume pieces. I know, um, some folks in my family have been drooling over them since <laughs> you brought them in and, um, keeping them ha their hands to themselves. So, Tell us about this. Tell us about maybe the story that you're putting together or has any of this been custom uh, custom ordered from you? Because I know you do a lot of custom work on demand um, to help other people build a story that they're looking to tell. Um, none of these pieces have been commissioned, okay. um, mostly because the people that would commission uh, items are cosplayers and uh, festival goers. Sure. Um, and as none of that stuff has been happening over the last year, mm -hmm. There just hasn't been a call for that. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm starting to get a little bit of movement there, um, mostly for weddings, actually, themed weddings. Right. Everybody's um, catching up on yes, events catching up that on were missed wedding. last year. Yeah, exactly. So it, the ball is starting to roll a little bit again. Um, but basically, I wanted to downsize my studio mm -hmm. because I just, just busting at the seams. Sure. And so I, I decided I'm going to make myself have a goal of by this particular date, I'm going to do this giant photo shoot sure. with all these people <clears throat> and um, make as much stuff as I can that I had intended to make over the last years or that I had, I have several journals that I write down ideas or mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a word. Sometimes it's uh, color schemes or sometimes it's just um, a character, you know, that I, okay, sure. that, that may encompass or be the, uh, um, what's the word? So you leave yourself some breadcrumbs to circle back yeah, to later yes. and sort of get those thoughts going. Right. Again. And sometimes they flow together and sure. I take this piece, this piece, and this piece and create this one cohesive thing. And then there are people that I know that I just would love to photograph sure. and just capture this part of them that they probably don't see in themselves. Right. Um, this particular costume I created specifically for um, uh, this girl that I met uh, in 2018. She, she was a model for a, a collaboration that I worked on. And I just have always wanted to photograph her since then. Okay. I, I didn't do the photographing. I just did the costuming for this particular collaboration. Sure. And um, I just wanted to photograph her in yellow. I just saw it. I saw it mm -hmm. in my head. And now I'm doing it and so i'm excited about that cool so you mentioned the photo shoot that you've been working on i've actually am familiar with having seen you work on that schedule and mm -hmm. and you know get some people involved um that are interested in doing this and that are um inevitably going to attain some of the feelings that we talked about right. just from doing and participating um and doing something that is out of their comfort zone and doing something that is different for them but at the same time they're going to get some really fun images out of it. Right. And what you get is the documentation of all these projects that have culminated and, and maybe they're collecting dust and it's just time yeah. to, it's just time to move forward. So uh, that, that's really exciting. So tell us a little bit about that photo shoot and what's going, uh, you know, uh, not that you're, I know you've built your schedule and you've got it all situated, um, but what is your, do you have like a, a grand theme or is it, is it more of a, Let's get all these projects documented now that I have the time and, and to put in attention to give to this um, with the folks that, you know, have committed to showing up and get on your schedule and all that stuff. Yeah, that's really good. Um, I my goal is to actually create a book. OK. And so yes, we talked about that. Some, I, I like it. Yeah. yeah. So some of these images uh, were are intended and had been planned years ago in my little notebook sure. um, that I wanted to create. And so they'll, they'll be the ones to finish off um, the images in the book. Okay. So my, my goal is to have that book available by October of this year. So I, I just, I have some, a few more images that I need, a few more stories to tell. Right. Um, and it will, that's part, the main reason for the photo shoot. Basically what I did was 
I said to my circle of people, hey, is anyone interested? Here's some dates. Here's some times. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm thinking about doing. I've got, you know, all of these headdresses and, and costumes and all of these ideas. Is anyone interested in participating and playing dress up and, and a flood of yes, yes i was very overwhelmed by the response of people right because right. uh, it's not the first time i've done that and it i was sort of beside myself with cool oh wow yeah, that's great. people actually like want to do this and want to be involved and want to see my work and it was it was a shock to me i was i was shocked because i i don't it's only been the last few years I've even considered myself an artist. Sure. So uh, the fact that other people want to be involved and that other people actually like my work and is kind of hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's a lot to take <laughs> in. It is a lot manage, to take yeah. in. It is a lot to take in. So um, we're talking about this photo shoot you got going on and uh, you've you put uh, put a line in the water to uh, see if anybody was interested in, um, you know, volunteering and, and wearing some of your things to, to um, get some of your work documented. And we're talking about your book that you're looking to, um, you're shooting for October. Now, does this book, uh, is this a build up to something larger? Yes. I know we've talked, we've talked a lot over the past couple of years. And one of the things that got me excited about all of the different things that you do was that you did have a large project. And I think what we talked about was figuring out how to essentially a lot of what we just talked about here is how do we fund that end game? Yes. And the answer to that is all of the steps along the way and, and, you know, making time for the pieces and, and building to get there. So tell us a little bit about, about where you're looking to go, you know, what's after this book that obviously you're gonna spend most of your year working on? Um, like, where are you looking to go? Because that, that was something that I really enjoyed hearing you talk about. If there was any inspiration from outside without maybe naming any names <laughs> to, to tell us about how you got to understanding where you're looking to go and what you wanna do. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, there's, uh particular photographer um, who works in a similar genre, but she's famous. Mm -hmm. And I just, her work draws me. Always have. I followed her when she first started um, over 10 years ago. And uh, she just, she inspires me. And her story, and especially along the way, um, I said, I want to be her when I grow up. Sure. Yeah. She just, uh, our work is different. It's, it's in, I, you know, I don't know that I'll ever attain her level of um, awesomeness because <laughs> she's younger than I am. And I already had three children when I started. So that makes things a little difficult for me uh, in regards to how much time I can spend doing this because sure. my kids come first. Right. Um, now I have four children and, um, that keeps me very busy. Yeah, you got to priori right. prioritize a lot. Yeah, right. I get it. So, um, so I, I, a couple years ago, after I did the collaboration shoot, I had this idea um, for this huge production, basically, that I wanted to do. Um, it, it was a... I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, just tell us about it, but don't, you know, don't you know, want to... Uh, my intention was to actually do all the photography last year. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, COVID happened sure. and all that just fell to pieces. And so recently, uh, with this photo shoot, actually, uh, this month, I'm revisiting all of that and replanning some things uh, for that. But the book that I want to release in October, um, it's going to be called uh, The Journey Home. And basically, it's just my journey to where I am now. Um to prepare me for the next thing, which is this right. production that right. I want to do. Because it's not just about the photos. Right. It's, I, I want to, it, there's a full experience that I want to do for those particular images. Um, but to help get me there financially, I'm hoping the sales of the book right. for, from this year will help fund and help me to create this experience. I would, I would love for people to experience. Right. And, you know, uh, to fund 
the larger project, the funds from that book, and then the funds from other projects that you yes. put out. Again, it all sort of snowballs and creates stepping stones for the next the next place that we're trying to get to. Yep. So we're all trying to build up to, to I guess, ultimately attain something. Uh, but I remember we talked um, some months back about this larger project in the back of your head mm -hmm. that you sort of finally revealed to me. And I was like, wow, this is great. And I know we talked a lot about, you know, what are the hangups? What are the obstacles? What are the hurdles? And it, it's the same ones. It's the same ones that, that stand in front of me and stand in front of other creatives and artists is, is funding the projects that you want to work on. And then it just circles back to, well, what do we have to do so we can right. do what we want to do? And, and that's great. So I really appreciate you sharing about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that jotted down <laughs> or in your viewfinder, but I definitely want to make sure to bring it up. Uh, let's move on a little bit to talk about, um, we've talked about your process. Why don't you tell us about your actual process a little bit, not necessarily with the photography, um, but how you create these, these items uh, that, that essentially build towards your imagery um, and, and your, you know, your sculptural uh, to, and more two dimensional art and things like that. So tell us about uh, your process as far as collecting material and going through the process and then pushing out the work. Well, as I had mentioned, I'm busting at the seams in my, in my studio space. So you got plenty I, of material, right? Yeah, because yeah. I, I don't throw away anything and I use sure. everything. Right. I mean, junk, like literal trash I will use, uh, especially in my uh, two-dimensional uh, work. Um, but I, I repurpose lots of things, repurpose vintage jewelry, repurpose uh, Christmas ornaments, repurpose... Mm -hmm. I mean, just half of her headdress was Christmas ornaments. Sure. Um, I just find new ways to use common items. Right. Um, like this here was a vintage beaded necklace. Sure. And I said, how amazing would that be in a headdress? And sure enough, it totally worked. <laughs> and luckily you kept it around. Right. That's right. I, I am, you didn't I, get rid of it. I, even though I'm busting at the seams, <laughs> I... Everything is labeled. Sure. Like anyone that knows me is, you're entirely way too organized to be a creative person. Yeah, you are pretty organized. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little humbling to see. Uh, so I'm going to rattle off. So you're talking about ordinary items. Yes. And there's a piece behind one of these headdresses that you, you said even trash. Yes. And that I, actually, that particular piece is actually very special to me because... At my at the time, five year old son mm -hmm. helped me with that piece. That's cool. He would That's collect great. the most random things, and I found a box of random things in the, in his room because he would just collect random things. The and things I said, you find in little boys' pockets, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I said, you know, we we can't just keep a pile of junk. We need to do something with this. So he and I sat and we laid everything out, and I attached it all, and then um, I showed him how to do, paint it and do the finish that's on it. Sure. And he just thought that was the best thing ever. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a cool, it's a super so, cool thing. There's all sorts of uh, little miniature cotter pins and binder clips and eye hooks. And yep. um, I'm going to keep calling out stuff. Little <laughs> strap holders and uh, curtain fasteners and screws. Yeah, just you know, furniture, literally yeah, random anything, pieces anything. of stuff. And then it turns out to be this uh, this really cool looking wall hanging that's... Got this patina antique looking yep. finish on it. Very yeah, I've, I've done ones it. with like a silvery patina as well. Um, I've done actually several cust large pieces with giant gears and sure. especially, you know, people that are into like steampunk, you right. know, or industrial, you know, work goes really well with that kind of thing. Um and you'll so. use, I mean, really nothing is off limits. You'll see. I mean, I've got. Oh, yeah. I got old pair of glasses and this and that piece and there. <laughs> frame. I mean, anything. And it's, it's something I picked on, on really early in watching your work and tried to figure out how to adapt some of those things into some of the things that I do. But uh, it's always a process and a journey. Uh, I mean, I've used placemats. Sure. I've used, uh, I mean, you name it, I've probably used it. Super Plumbing cool. pieces, um, just random random stuff yeah artificial flowers and mm -hmm. artificial yeah plant real parts. real moss real dried stuff oh, bark. Re the bark bark yeah i mean i've made dresses and corsets out of bark sure <laughs> so uh, nothing is off limits <laughs> yeah super cool it's uh 
it's a pretty open way to create. That's uh, it's even her limitless. her costume here. All of her fabric was repurposed. Okay. So it was. Sure. I just because it was cheaper to buy a piece of clothing from the thrift store for fabric than it was to go to the fabric store and source it from and right, exactly play retail for exactly. It. Yeah. So you know you do what you can when when there's not a whole lot of money and it just it turned out perfectly. Yeah. So certainly did all sorts of awesome stuff up here. I actually don't ever really get tired of looking at the. I'm always trying to figure out what people do and and it's when you have the complexity. And the dynamics of ordinary things and and the painting and the finishing and the, the skill sets to put it all together um, with you just sort of living your life and going through the process and doing the things that give you the feelings that you're looking for. I mean, that's that's what does it. That's uh, it's an amazing thing. So let's talk a few minutes about let's see. Um, of course, this is the Local Artist Guild podcast, mm -hmm. and um, I consider you one of the, um, the the ranking officers in that group. And uh, I'm lucky to have you as a friend and as a comrade and uh, and a cohort and all these adventures. And uh, so can you tell us anything about how, let's see, I wrote a couple of notes here. I said, you know, tell us, how did, how did you come into finding the Local Artist Guild? And... Um, Maybe tell us a little bit about the positive impacts that it might have might have mm -hmm. had on your path or uh, just your life in general. If if anything positive, maybe it's just been all really you know terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it, it's all been very positive. Uh, I found the local artist guild. If I remember correctly, I actually met you at something was going on at Reformation Brewery. I think it was like a Maker's Mash, maybe? Probably. There's a good chance and, of that. Yeah, Maker's um, Mash is a great event locally, um, yeah. hosted by some of our other friends. And and uh, it's a lot of continuity there. I think there was a Maker's Mash this past weekend, yes, actually. Yes, there and was. And so, I mean, that's a great a great event. I know we've both uh, um, been involved and, mm -hmm. and uh, shown work at that event. So, yeah, yep. I, you know what? I believe you. I, don't, I, I couldn't pinpoint it, but I'm glad you reminded well, me. Well, I was actually gold leafing some beads, and you'd come over, and you were very interested. You in were my, bending. Yeah, yes, I was bending. bending. And right. so we talked about gold leafing, and I, I mean, there's a piece here that's got it. Both these pieces have it. I use it in makeup. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I yeah. use it. I, I love metallics. Sure, yeah. <laughs> it is one of my most favorite things to touch and feel and use in my in all of my work. Um, so, and yeah, I think you had invited me to the, uh, it was, I, I can't remember where, I think we're meeting at Copper Coin. Probably the next, the next meeting of yeah, the time. Yeah, it was the next yeah, meeting. Sure. So, um, yeah, that's how I, I got involved and I loved it. I being around other creatives and um, just your passion for lifting up artist. Sure. I, I just had never run across that before. And it has been um, wonderful to meet all the, and I have um, gained you as a friend and several others in the, in the guild as a, as friends um, as well as colleagues. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. it is what a just, group of peers, right? yes, yeah. yes. It's just been, it's been amazing. Um, just the encouragement to keep pushing because as artists, sometimes we can really stumble on our, on our, by our own feet, Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and, For sure. um, it, it helps to have other people who understand that to help move you along. Yeah. You, sometimes you need, uh, we all need to be pulled up yep. and, um, you know, reminded that sometimes you just got to keep going, you yes. know, even when it doesn't feel like that's possible, you just have to kind of keep trucking along. Um, have you had any professional um, have there been anything about the local artist skill and maybe our relationship or relationships you've built with other people in the group, um, that have helped, helped your path gain direction or, um, any positive business type items you'd mentioned. Uh, I know you've picked up a couple of commissions, but you know, we all get, um, we all have our own networks and contacts. Um, so have you gotten anything that you feel like was a direct result of being a part of the group or, do you feel like your your time invested comes back to you in in the proper in the in the correct proportion? Definitely, um, definitely. I have been uh, exposed to and made aware of shows, you know, art shows, um, 
people that are interested in buying art, uh, people that are interested in um, buying my art, <laughs> right? Because yeah. of the artist guild, sure, and um, and some business contacts as well. I mean, that's been uh, very rewarding uh, in that um, my circle has grown, and so now right, I have right. source. Uh, you know, being a stay at home mom for all the years that I've been staying at home, my, even my personal circle was very small and the artist guild has not only has my personal circle grown, but so has my business circle. Sure. So, you know, everyone from framers to printers to, you know, all of it. And it's just, it, it's just been really good. I think if it wasn't for the local artist guild, I don't think I would be where I'm at now. Um, and I'm way further along down the road, business-wise, than I thought I would be, even even with COVID. Sure, we I mean, we had so, some. I remember when we met, we and I when I met a lot of folks for the first couple of times in the in our group, um, we always sort of had a very similar discussion. We would always come back to the same questions. You know, where do we go? Where do we belong? And um, and I, I know about about 12, 13 months ago, I, we had we had had uh, the leadership in our group had had a conversation about starting to execute shows. I think you and I had gotten to the point where we had sat down with a calendar over breakfast yep. and said, we need to pick some dates and let you know the chips fall where they may. And then I was going to start going after venues. I was looking at libraries and, and places um, that we could have shows. And then, of course, everything sort of fell apart on us. But now here we are. We're coming up on, I think, and of course, by the time this podcast goes out, um, this show will have come and gone, um, but we're going to have our first show this weekend, yep. which is super exciting. I know your family has been investing, uh, several other leaders in the group have been investing and, and members in our group, um, been pouring our time into what needs to be done to make this happen. And here we have, you know, some amazing producers helping us uh, project out what it is that we want in the community that we want to build up. And um, so it's it's showtime now, and yeah. I hope I hope that um, it does that you do feel good about that because I mean I feel great about it. Um, I'm excited about showing alongside some of my favorite people and artists and like you said peers and people that make me want to get better. Right. So that said, do you feel like you know you mentioned that you feel like you're in a place now that you maybe couldn't visualize at the time? Does it? help you keep the fire burning like you you keep wanting to get better you know because as leaders we have to set the example and and figure out how to lift up other folks and uh, but at the same time you have to keep your game strong right right so maybe speak a little bit about that like where you're you know is this something that keeps you motivated and you know definitely definitely it's you know the iron sharpens iron thing uh you know without other creatives in my life it, it it would be very easy to become uh, stagnant. Right. You know, even, even other people that I may not necessarily have a ton in common with, you know, stir the pot. And that's a good thing. Right. And I'm very grateful for that, uh, that the Artist Guild has been that avenue for me. Cool. So. Yeah, it's, it's almost like if you allow yourself, you can learn from anything or anyone that you're willing to just definitely be patient enough to absorb definitely you know i have a pretty strong mindset that uh any anyone that's a master at their craft even if it's not something that you're interested in they have something to teach right even if it's just through observing what they do um, and it can be anything. It'd be a guy that climbs a light pole or a mechanic or a, you know a carpenter any you can pick up on new trains of thought or and new techniques and new ideas to integrate into what you do or just even your life. So. For sure. One of the other things about the Artist Guild yes. that has really helped. Yeah, let's talk about it. Is I'm sure he's running, so we're good. I, yeah. Well, for a lot of years, I thought that I there was something wrong with my work. As in, sure. it wasn't, um, not that it wasn't good enough, but it wasn't real art. That, that art shouldn't even be anywhere near what I was doing. And I think um, the local artist guild helped me put that into perspective, that what I do is art, even if 
some people don't appreciate it, right, it's still right. art nonetheless. And that creating to sell is not good for me, well, for any artist really, um, but to create to create the piece, to sure. to put that out there, to to put whatever it is that's that's inside of you that you're putting in your artwork. Uh, because I just, I, un unfortunately for many years, the people around me didn't encourage me in that and encouraged me to make things that sell, which was not my thing. Like right now, if I was doing that, I'd be making farmhouse stuff. That is totally, obviously not, sure. not me. But luckily there's enough people in the market doing yeah. those things that we don't have to do right. that. And that's one of the things I'm usually grateful of because I, I've been in that the spot where, you know, you you know, you said it wasn't that you didn't think you're good enough. I think not good enough is something that I've navigated and dealt with um, for most of my creative career as an adult. Um, it's really difficult for artists in any medium to find acceptance. Yes. And or validation. Yes. And and um, you know, and that that's kind of a lonely place. Um, and something that, that, you know, the local artist guild has done for me is to help me realize that we all have different value and we all have different skill sets and strengths and weaknesses. And, um, the things that I'm good at might not be what the person next to me is the best at, but maybe I can help set the example and help them learn a little something, but, and vice versa. Like we were also talking about. You can learn from anyone that's really good at what they do, right. um, whether it's orating or, you know, photography or building, whatever it is, painting. Um, you know, I'm not the best painter in the world and I'm never going to be. Right. But I'm also not attained. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, I, I would rather paint a million paintings than one painting for a million dollars because it's that process. That's right. I love the process so much. Um, but that's a great uh, it's a great comment about you know, how, you know, we are, we, we found our, I think most everybody that comes to the table at some point, they have this realization that just sort of washes over them that, Hey, I'm not alone. Right. Like this, these aren't new feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only person that feels like this. And then here's a group of people that have all to some extent navigated the same feelings, but in their own way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really good to be able to process, especially those negative feelings. I oftentimes feel very, my work is very mediocre. That as a person, I'm mediocre at best. And it's re it's hard. It's a, it's a struggle. It is. It is difficult. And difficult. without other creatives speaking into my life and encouraging me, I mean, I have other people that are not creatives also encouraging me, but it's different when it's someone who's walked that same road. It is different. Yeah. Empathy is, is, I think everybody wants to be empathetic to some degree, but empathy means that you have experienced right. the same thing. And, uh, and that's really good to find that in people where it's authentic, right? You know, not someone just trying to be an empath, but you, again, you can see and feel that that person has been in that position. Well, I think artists just have, in general, a, a different view of the world and That's, a yeah, different absolutely. view of people. And it is helpful um, to see that perspective that, that you have. So, Like from someone else. Yes. Yeah, to hear yeah, the from same someone thing. outside of you. Right. It, it's, it's like you said, oh, I'm not alone. I'm, I'm not doing this by myself. And it's, it's really good. It's, it's, a, it's a really good thing. I'm sad that it's taken me all these years to get to this point. Like, I wish I'd had I this when I was way. younger. Right, yeah. I, if, uh, if I had found, and I was, uh, it's not for lack of looking or um, seeking it out. Uh, in my early 20s, I was looking for, I, I didn't know what I was looking for, but I was looking. I was actively seeking out uh, other artists, um, people that did the things that at the time I looked up to creatively, um, you know, graffiti artists and abstract artists and uh, people that would integrate unusual, um, unusual 
things, applications or ideas into their work. And it just really, I was looking for people. And, um, you know, when you're uh, early 20s and you don't know anything, but you feel like you know everything, uh, you, especially in this path, if you don't have a network behind you from education or, um, you know, where you lived or those sorts of things, like when you go through college, you inevitably build a network. Right. That, you know, a lot of people, that, that's their network through their life. And, um, but when you don't have those experiences in life, you're sort of at ground zero. Right. And so I showed up in Atlanta, fresh out of military school and have, and I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anything, obviously. Um, and, you know, it, it's not doors getting slammed in your face, uh, but acceptance was not something that you just happened upon. Um, and even even tracking people down is it's to, to, to this day can be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's not for lack of wanting to or trying. Uh, you know, I think you mentioned, you know, artists are really unique in how they view the world. And, and um, some of us are very congruent and operate well together. And some of us don't. And that's right. part of, I think that's part of who, you know, people are, who they are as an individual is how they navigate other people. Right. And, and other things in their market. Um, so, but yeah, it's, um, Atlanta's a tough market, man. But it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have learned the hard way and to realize that sometimes you just have to do what people like you and I do, which is on good days you turn to the process and on bad days you turn to the process. And on any day that you turn to your process and your, your operations, your day gets better, your next day is better. Uh, even this conversation and, and, and recording this podcast is uh, today's Monday. You know, Monday's not <laughs> Monday's not the ideal day for uh, uh, you know uh, this sort of thing. But when something's important to you, make time. Um, but at the same time, it's I'm grateful to have gotten to this point, even though it hasn't been necessarily easy. Right. You know, so I probably lost my train of thought there, but that's going to happen. <laughs> it's Murph. <laughs> You know, so here we are now. Podcast is our second podcast that we're recording now. Um, so I'm super grateful that you, you know, you came on and would, you know, offer your time to talk about it, what you do and, and how you operate and, uh, and, and, and share that with uh, wherever we can project this out to. Um, tell me about the future of the Local Artists Guild and what you see happening based on the things that are in motion now. Well, I... Like, I, we have plans. Yes. So tell us about some of those plans. Well, just more shows. <laughs> yes, more shows. More shows. <laughs> uh, I, think that, I think that's a big thing. I, I really... Um, I, I think that we will have classes and... Um, I don't know. I just see things growing. Sure. Growing. Um, and even if it's just sharing our ideas or sharing our processes or, you know, classes, right. that's a great one. Shows, 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 shows. We're going to do monthly shows. Um, we're going to try to utilize our resources and space and our networks to share what we do with other people um, while also sustaining what we're doing. Right. Uh, so uh, I think... One of the things I'm going to throw onto the list is we'll have shows and, and figure out how to do some small classes, um, even if they're, you know, places that we have to figure out where those are going to be. Right. Um, I think as a unit, we may be able to gain a small amount of influence or leverage and, and, and put in small asks in an attempt to try to get back to the community a little bit. Um, we can do art talks and marketing talks and, you know, again, help share with the younger generations that are looking towards us. Um, you know, hopefully some of us are inspiring the next generation, right? right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so big things on the horizon and, you know, again, huge thanks to the fellows producing this podcast because we wouldn't be able to do this, uh, without them. <laughs> That's for sure. Tell us about how we can find your work, um, online or in person, um, and maybe some locations where you have, um, goods available for purchase. Um, obviously here is one of those places. Yes. Um. Uh, I have some uh, of my products at Menagerie on Main. 
in oh, fantastic. Canton. Canton. Yeah. Yep. Um, of course, here. Uh, I also do shows locally. Um, I'm going to do a show in Ball Ground in July, I believe. Uh, and then online. That's where the bulk of my right, of, course. of my items are is uh, online. Um, you can go to jennifergriffinstudios.com mm -hmm. and shop um, for both uh, costume accessories and uh, my photography, my artwork, um, as well as uh, Etsy. You can find uh, Griffin House. Okay. Uh, I also have a Facebook page for Griffin House um, and Instagram. And then Jennifer Griffin Studios is also on Facebook and Instagram. Um, yeah, that's where you can find And me. so we said Jennifer Griffin Studios, Facebook and Instagram, and Griffin House, Facebook yes. and Instagram. Then you have the Jennifer Griffin Studios as your website where people can yes. see your work. And, uh, and then, of course, Etsy is one of your the platforms yes. that you use for direct Yeah, that's sales. my e-commerce uh, okay. platform that I use for selling anything. So. so is there anything before we close up, uh, we've talked about a lot of awesome stuff and about your process and your work and, and um, the, you know, the sort of the, the mutually beneficial, the benefit of the feelings, you know, I think most of what people do is either to give or get a feeling. And we, we talked a good deal about that. So, um, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff, the local artist guild and, and what you do and how you do it it's really amazing to hear about and especially uh, to take in visually um i just kind of want to reach out and touch a lot of it so as we before we close out is there anything you'd like to share or speak about before we sort of wrap things up today um just to encourage people to get out and see art view it experience it in in all of its forms um I, th I think we need a, a mental health check, and I think art is a means of doing that. So. Sure, that's a great point, a mental health check, and just get out to experience something. Um, you know, things your brain have, ne have never seen or interacted with, it actually makes you happy whether you realize that or not. And so. and to interact with it and, and to support those artists. You don't have to buy something from an artist to support them. If you like their work, share their work on sure. you know, social media. If you like their work, click the little heart. I mean, it, it just... it. It goes a long way. I, as an artist on this end, it goes a long way in no, spurring you to continue to, to produce work. Sure. Continue to create art because you know people are receiving it and experiencing it, even if they're not buying it. But if people aren't sharing and people aren't liking, then you don't know how it's being received. Sure. Like any grain of feedback, like yes. a, a like is like a little grain of encouragement. Just and takes a second yeah. to, to share and to like. And I just encourage people to, you know, follow those artists that make you feel. Follow those artists that make you feel good. Follow those artists that help life be more beautiful sure oh that's a really nice nice way of putting that um well uh we're gonna wrap this up and uh, i'm gonna thank uh, our producers uh nicholas and eric again uh for producing the local artist guild podcast and thank you jennifer for being here today and being vulnerable and sharing <laughs> with us about your process and and what you're passionate about and um I'm going to remind folks to get by, you know, make an appointment um, here at this facility. We um, there are appointments available from 430 to 830 uh, any day of the week. And um, again, just want to thank everybody for watching and listening. And um, if there's anything the local artists do, the local artists guild can do to help you out. And we'd like to be a part of that. So um, we are here to encourage artists to uh, invest in themselves and invest in their work. And then uh, we'll see about putting those pieces together to help help folks however we can. So thanks again for being here. Thanks for having really me. Glad to have you. Oh, like prior jobs? Well, I know Miss Jennifer before she, before you were um, you have worked for yourself. I've been self your entire life since I was 17 years old. Wow. Yeah. 17, yeah. I started uh, working in a hair salon and I was going to apprentice to do hair because I just, the college I wanted to go to 
I we couldn't afford. Sure. Which right, right. at the time was the Art Institute of Atlanta. Of course. Which is now SCAD. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so even back then, I, we couldn't afford it. So, uh, yeah. So my friend was like, hey, you can come work with me at the hair salon I'm at and well, we can, you know, have fun. And so I totally right. did that. And then I got engaged super young and uh, said, I don't have time to get my license to do hair, but I can totally get my license to do nails. And so I was a nail tech. Right, right. Until I had my second child, which was like however many years later that was. A lot of years later. Right, right. Um, but in the meantime, I also uh, started doing interior design. I oh, Before okay. the yeah, whole I DIY movement that. happened, yeah. I was doing interior design and um, painting and doing murals and all, all kind of fun things. Um, and then the DIY movement happened. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, I started having babies and it just wasn't wasn't an option anymore so. yeah and that's a it's a huge theme in your in your life is uh you know self-employed um but also constantly and consistently working with your hands oh totally and that's that's something i relate well to so you know much. the same principles apply to almost all art mediums as far as uh how you put colors together sure. and um you know, so it was very easy to go from um, like interior design to create um, creating costume pieces and photography. Like it, it just it was very seamless you're, for me. You're already predisposed to having this, even if practice and ability to visualize an outcome. Very much so. But not only visualize an outcome that you wanted to work towards having the tools and skill sets to work towards that outcome. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, composition is something you would use in interior design the same way you would use in painting, the same way you would use in photography. Right. Sure. So it just, it was just, it was very easy to just take this skill set and move it to this one right. that I could do in that season of life and, of small children. And even in, you know, you say it's, it's, it's the same from this to this to this. And even if it's not, the same according to the book or the education the way people that solve problems the way that we do um we make it work right but we draw those parallels and figure out how to apply um these ideals and philosophies to what we do and from other places and that it's it's really cool because it's it's it seem it's seemingly an endless supply of transferable skills right Definitely. You know, and it, and it continues to transition well just based on your intent. Yeah. For sure. Hmm. Oh, really good. I had to be a lunch lady when I was 19, and that sucked. <laughs> Don't cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> like, no joke, there were some kids just... that were, like, my age. And yeah, right. it, it was awful because I, I, I was 19, just got married, and... Um, I was building my clientele in sure. this salon and I just wasn't, it wasn't enough money. So you do what you have to do right. to pay your bills. And so what I could get that had health insurance was being a lunch lady. And let me tell you, that is some hard work and it is awful. It's ruthless. Yes. It, it's terrible. I, and I, I, and I got terribly, uh, the kids would make terrible comments. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, it was awful. Sometimes that's what our ki our jobs are as kids is to just be that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, again, I appreciate it. Whether we're still running yeah. film or not. Man.